All right, welcome everyone. If you are preparing for SOC analyst or security analyst interview, then this is the must watch video. This is a mock interview video. Each video will consist of one main question and followed by a couple of counter questions. And I will answer each questions in two format. First, the direct format, direct answer. And second is detailed answer. So without any ado, let's get started. Basically, both IPS and IDS are used for network security. IDS is intrusion detection system that monitors and detect any malicious activity. It shows an alert to the SOC analyst and then they can act on it. SOC analyst can analyze and take the decision. Whereas IPS is intrusion prevention system, which not just detect the malicious activity, but also block it. Both IPS and IDS are used in the enterprise network and can be installed on host or endpoint and also on network level, but they're still different. IPS is like our antivirus that doesn't require a lot of human intervention. However, if you look at IDS, it is designed to give you visibility of the network. IPS is deployed in line where IDS takes the copy of the network traffic. All right, everyone. So let's get into details. Okay. So here you can see our interview question, which is uh, what is IDS and IPS and how are they different? IDS and IPS. Let's start with the function. Okay. Or I would say functionality. IDS, as I said, is the major function is to detect. That's it. The function of IDS is to detect and give the alert, give the alert to the SOC analyst or the, uh, you know, analyst, uh, you know, it could be threat management team who might be monitoring at the active alert from the IDS. Okay. Whereas if you talk about the IPS, it not only detect the threat, but it can also prevent the threat from spreading. Okay. It can also prevent can take the action as well. It can stop the uh, stop the execution. It can eradicate the malware. It can perform any sort of action that we want it to do. Okay. Next, let's talk about the action itself. So IDS technically it's a passive device. So it just take the copy of the traffic sitting in the network. So it cannot take the any action. Okay. So IDS cannot do any action. It will only give you the alert. Okay. So that you then decide what to do on it. Okay. But IPS is, is, is like in a robot itself. It's like, uh, it is, it's capable to take the uh, active response. So it's, it's very much active and it can uh, enforce certain security policy in real time, maybe to block certain traffic in the real time itself to block connection, to block the outgoing connection, to block the incoming traffic connection and everything. So it is, it is, it can do a lot of stuff. The problem is, uh, you know, you can't really, uh, in, when you put the IPS in real world, it might disrupt the business as well. So it's, it's important in, in the initial time, uh, in the large organization utilize the IDS very well because they can't really play with the business, right? Because if you, if IPS go wrong, it perform any, it get any false positive and create any policy or enforce it, it might disrupt the business. Okay. So that's, that's where it is very important. Now response. Now, IDS basically alert whom? The admin, right? The, it basically alert the threats to the admin. And then, uh, uh, you know, the human, uh, the admin or the SOC analyst or the respond, responder basically then look at the alert, try to uh, it, it perform the analysis, try to see if it is the real alert, if it is a false positive, and then it depends on the, you know, the analyst. When it comes to the IPS, IPS respond in the real time. It, it respond in the real time automatically, okay? Everything happened in the automatic way, okay? Now let's talk about some of the example. So some of the popular tool when it comes to IDS is these, you know, it's not uh, is good because it, it's capable of doing the, uh, you know, both in fact. So uh, we have uh, Snort, we have uh, Surikata. Surikata, I, I love it. It's very powerful. Uh, in fact, if you talk about, uh, uh, you know, if you if you look at Cisco IPS, Cisco IPS uses the Snort itself. Now this has been maintained by Cisco, if I'm not wrong. Uh, Snort can also be used in, in the IPS as well, but it also gives you a lot of visibility. Surikata is also powerful. It's a network-based uh, you know, IDS solution. We also have Zeek, which was earlier Bro. Okay, formerly we called it Bro. And when it comes, all these three tools are open source. So you, it's all readily available. You can visit their official website and download the package. Um, uh, Snort is not completely free. Uh, Surikata is completely free. You can download uh, some of the Surikata rules as well, available on the emerging threads, okay? Um, when it comes to the IPS, uh, you know, uh, most of the, most of the uh, IPS uh, softwares are, uh, uh, you know, a commercial tool. So if it's the most popular is uh, Cisco Firepower and there's one more, uh, Checkpoint IPS is also very much power, uh, popular as well. Okay. Checkpoint uh, IPS. This is also very popular. 
again uh, you can also use the suricata for ips you can also use not as well but you need an additional intervention you need a uh, you know additional rules a uh, powerful policy mechanism as well so maybe you can use uh, snot or suricata integrated with the or any open source tools like uh, elk or maybe wazoo as well so that's where it's going to be completely open source and free uh, let's talk about some uh, use cases now um, ids is very much popular when it comes to the port scanning detecting any port scanning related alerts or uh, detecting any malware signature okay uh, any any malware signature or maybe web application related attacks like sql injection so it is very popular uh, to detect that on also brute force attack brute force attack related to maybe it's ssh or maybe rdp related a brute force attack attempt okay now when it comes to uh, ips we want any everything to happen automatically for for some uh, advanced threats like a ddos okay distributed denial of service attack we want we want ips to detect that and uh, second could be related to uh, intrusion attempt maybe uh, uh, you know uh, anything which is uh, related to any vulnerability exploit okay related to any exploit so we might be having a known vulnerability so ips maintain the uh, vulnerability a database of all known vulnerability maybe related to metasploit exploit so it can detect those vulnerability and metasploit uh, match with the metasploit vulnerability exploit and can block those traffic okay it can also be helpful in detecting any botnet or uh, maybe on, on some level you can say zero day exploit as well okay so these are the this, these are the major difference between ids and ips well i feel both are good with their own use cases and organizations sh should consider both if you look at the next generation antivirus or maybe edr what we call endpoint detection and response we already have host based ips and ids installed network based ips is helpful in detecting brute force attack denial of service attack or exploit within the network the only challenge i experienced with ids is that we we have to deal with a lot of false positive we have to keep improving the ids rule in order to bring down the false positives the challenge with ips is that if it takes the incorrect decision while enforcing any policy it can impact the business all right so let's get into some details you see um, when we talk we are going to differentiate everything from uh, ip hips hids and ips and ids so uh, as you can see hips and nips is a part of ips okay so both has prevention techniques okay hids and nids these are uh, part of and ids sorry so it can only detect and alert to the admin okay so we are going to differentiate uh, all of them okay so let's start with hips so h stand for host so there are as you can see there are two kind of ips or ids host based ips and network based ips host based ips is installed on the host computer server anything any endpoint and nips is installed in the network where we have the live network going on okay maybe connected to the switch connect to the firewall it's a part of firewall within the firewall anything okay so let's start with the first the purpose so the purpose of hips uh, is is to protect or it's to monitor the uh, uh, you know host it's to protect the host from the local threat and in, into the system so it's basically to protect the host okay it could be our windows machine it could be linux machine anything okay it could it is helpful to detect uh, any kind of a brute force attack happening onto the system itself so it's just like your antivirus as simple as that okay it's like your av simple okay now what are the tools uh or let's first move to the other purpose as well now when you talk about the hids it also detect all the uh, you know all the issues detect all the suspicious activity all the suspicious okay all the suspicious activity within the endpoints and um, you know it gives the alert so technically speaking nowadays although you know theoretically these two sounds different but in a way technically in the real world both are combined together and becomes edr endpoint detection and response you see both are combined both are combined together and then we have a product called edr product okay now you have a crowd strike in it you have a lot of other products available in it okay one of this popular product we we call it as crowd strike okay we have then uh, uh windows defender windows defender for endpoints okay this is also very powerful sentinel one is also again so in the real world both of them are combined together and then we get the Uh, final product and we call it as edr endpoint detection and response okay now let's talk about the nips now 
So NIP, NIPS is the network based IPS. Okay. It monitors and also uh, protect the network by analyzing the real time traffic. Okay. So NIP, NIPS is basically, uh, you know, installed on the firewall most of the time. Okay. It's actually installed within the firewall. So it, it is installed in line in the real time traffic. It actively look at the traffic. But when you talk about the NIDS, it actually takes the copy of the traffic. For example, if the internet is here and you have some server within this data center and you have a firewall over here, so your NIPS will be installed in the firewall itself or can be deployed as an additional device after that. So the traffic will be, will be going, the live traffic will be going through the IPS itself. Whether your IPS is within the firewall or as a separate device, it will, the tra traffic will pass through the uh, IPS itself. Whereas if you talk about the NIDS, NIDS basically takes the copy of the traffic because we don't want uh, the real time action on every traffic. Okay. We just want the visibility. So what happened is this is your network. So this is your firewall maybe. Okay. And these are all your servers. Okay. So you basically take a copy of this live traffic to your hardware or we call it as sensor as well. And this is what NIDS is. Okay. You take a copy of the traffic because you don't want to disrupt any, or you don't want to interrupt any, uh, you know, ongoing live traffic. Okay. So that's the only difference. And this is the deployment operational difference in a way. So uh, in the real world, if you say, then the practical example is uh, uh, the popular tool, I would say, not example, is Cisco Firepower, then uh, Firepower. Then we also have Checkpoint, Checkpoint IPS, okay? And NIDS is also, you can use the same software for the NIDS activity as well, but uh, there are many other tools available. You can use Zeek as well for the same purpose. Uh, you can analyze uh, all the real-time traffic with Tripwire as well, which is popular for file integrity, but it can also perform, uh, it can also detect other malicious activity as well, okay? Now let's talk about some use cases. Now let's talk about some use cases here, okay? So host-based intrusion prevention system, they are the, the, it is useful to monitor syslog uh, or maybe, uh, you know, monitor all these syslog syslog alert of your Windows or Linux machine and uh, look at the file changes if there's any unauthorized file change happen, it can detect and uh, prevent it from happening. So because HIPS can take action as well, right? So file change is also called file integrity monitoring check. It can also take, uh, take a look at the network traffic. And if it is going to a malicious site, it will stop the connection. Whereas HIDS, as I told you, currently it has been combined together. So with HIDS, you only get the visibility of all, all the things that are, that are happening. So you also get have, have a syslog visibility. You also have the file change visibility alert. You also have a network visibility, file system, memory, uh, registry change, everything that's happening on the machine. Okay. So, uh, but, but the beauty is when we combine both of them, you get the visibility and you also can uh, take action on it. Okay. So I hope you got it. In the real world, both HIPS and HIDS are combined together, okay? Now, when we talk about the use cases of NIPS, well, NIPS is useful if you have a kind of, a, you know, denial of service related attack situation, uh, you know, or maybe you want to detect uh, any kind of uh, malware uh, which has the, uh, you know, uh, with, with the known signature, with the known signature, or it could be any exploit as well, or known exploit or known of known vulnerability. Whereas uh, when we talk about the NIDS is, is mainly for the visibility. So let's say we, we want to take a look at the network scanning traffic, or maybe let's say some, we, we want to see if anybody's uh, trying to scan our network, trying to perform a network discovery, uh, trying to perform any reconnaissance, or uh, maybe we want to analyze any unusual, unusual uh, network pattern or traffic as well. This is all possible with NIDS. Okay. So I hope you understood the difference among all of this platform, but remember, Although we, we just um, made a comp comparison, but these all, these two things are actually combined together and we see them as EDR, but these are different, okay? These are different and sold as a different product or delivered as a different product as an open source as well. So I hope you got it.